Hello ladies, how are you doing today? First of all, let me thank all of you for the love and the support I've received on my very last video, especially the comments. It really helps the YouTube algorithm to make me discovered by many others. So keep it up, sissies. You guys are mwah. Thank you. The video today is a rundown of the 10 key tips I wish I knew before going natural years back. Nothing too crazy, just basic knowledge. I wish I've been taught to make my hair journey sexier and smoother. Tips your daughter, your sister, your friends, your family, or anyone with kinky coily hair texture who is interested into growing their crown long and healthier should know. Sis, get yourself comfortable because we're about to dive deep into this detailed report. Disclaimer, these precious tips are a compilation of things from research, some stuff I've learned from other naturals online or in real life, and some I've actually figured out myself or learned the hard way. They range from all levels, from the never been natural before to people who are in the transition phase to those who wear the hair natural every single day. My goal here is not to single out one type of person, but to try to appeal to the masses, the whole kinky, coily hair community, the 4C, the 5G, the 7X. Remember my last video? Yes, us. So you ladies get the most out of this video. They are bonuses tips I've almost forgot that appear to me as the most important out of all of these listed afterward. Crucial, may I say. I will insert a clip towards the end of the video. Girl, watch till the end. I know you. With that being said, let's dive into tip number one. Pick your path. Are you on this hair journey? to longer and healthier natural hair two options here depending on your comfort level eat a big chop what does that mean start from scratch getting rid of the damaging of chemically processed hair or hands for that matter you can end up bald if you dare or you're gonna have to transition transition is dealing with two distinct hair texture for a while then cutting off gradually the affected end or waiting for the right time to do so all in once. Note, you can transition from relaxed hair, dyed hair, chemically processed hair, damaged hair, to healthy natural hair. Second tip, figure out your hair specification. Keep in mind, what works for your hair might not work for somebody else's. Natural hair come in different curl pattern, texture, color, and sizes, ranging from looser to tighter curls. It is important to do some research to be knowledgeable about your hair specs. How? Trial and error. You practice, you observe, you learn, you adapt. As you go, you get inspiration from others, you search. That's how it works. Based on these characteristics, you will adjust your hair regimen, but also your hair product and the most suitable hairstyles for you. Don't neglect that. Don't neglect this part, it's very important. Me. I'm a 4C natural, low density, and low porosity. Let me know if you need a spare video on this specific topic in the comment section. Down below, I'll be glad to make one for you. Tip number three, always work in sections, no matter what. I moisturize, I pre-poop, I condition, I even shampoo, I hair dry in sections. Sectioning has been a game changer for me so far. It made this natural hair journey of mine easier as I get less breakage than usual. I'm telling you, it's one of the keys to my hair volume. Tip number four, careful with your hair styles. Other times, the most popular ones are not necessarily the safest. The way they will rip your hair strand apart or make your edges thinning or even your hairline receding. In the long run, girl, you know I'm against tension or tight styling, especially if your hair is not as its healthiest condition. You know, weak, dull, brittle, dry, excessive dryness. Anything with too much tension can cause irreversible trauma and hair loss. Alopecia is knocking at the door, girl. 
So be mindful with the styles that will stunt your hair growth. Anything giving you a headache or forcing you to take painkillers needs to be removed or taken down. I don't care how much it has cost you or how little it looks on IG. How to learn this the hard way after losing my hairline so many times? Remember, it takes you years to grow your hair. Long, but only one style on properly done to lose it all in one second, one second. So think twice before. If you're planning to grow your hair long and healthier in the long run, always prioritize hair over style. Tip number five, be gentle when manipulating your hair. Proceed with caution and take your time, girl. It's not a race, it's a marathon. Slow and sturdy, always win the race. If you're planning to maintain that natural volume, and retain those inches. For every hair strength count. I know 4 hair can be challenging at times, but I beg you, I beg, if you're not in the mood, you're upset, exhausted, or even in the rush, leave that crown of yours in peace until you actually feel like giving it. Tenderness, love, and care, TLC. TLC is the secret weapon to maintain that mind of yours in its full glory. <laughs> Tip number six, low manipulation hairstyles. The less you play with your hair, the faster it's gonna grow. Keep your fingers out of your head once your hair is styled, whether it turns out good or not. Overstyling is the enemy of progress. One or two go-to hairstyle we do in the long run. I repeat, for the ones at the back, Until the next wash day, preferably now up to you, girl. Don't say I didn't want you. Tip number seven, keep your hair stretched to avoid unnecessary tangles and knots. Therefore, breakage, we are trying to stay away from breakage so we can retain the hair length. Braiding or twisting have been proven to be factually great alternatives in the kinky and coily natural hair community. Stretching your hair remains imperative when in afro style as well before going bed to also keep that fro structure intact for the next day. You could also opt for bending method if you prefer. Very popular in the natural hair community as well. Bonus tip one. <laughs> Bonus tip number one, set yourself a hair goal. Why do you want to go natural? Be intentional with your reason. Write it or pin it on your wall. I don't know. Somewhere you'll see it every day. As a reminder, cause baby girl, that journey is not always going to be fun. You get your ups, but downs as well. That hair goal is to remind you why you're doing this so you don't give up at the first obstacle. Cause girl, you are going to get tested every single day. Stay focused. The whole world is gonna keep on testing you, which leads me to the next bonus tip. Build yourself a tough skin and a strong mindset. You're gonna need it. Cut towards your hair, the society will overreact. Be ready. Your circles, your colleagues, strangers, people will have stuff and things to say. Be prepared to hear out loud unsolicited opinions, bad or good. Some might even allow themselves to touch, pull, even massage <laughs> your hair without permission. Whether their intentions are pure or here, you're gonna get caught off guard a few and a couple of times as long as you don't let these isolated incidents ruin and affect negatively your hair journey girl you good stay focused you will be okay what doesn't kill you makes you stronger you fine just keep it moving keep pushing keep grinding tip number eight have realistic expectations, my girlfriend, about your hair. Learn to love whatever grows out of your scalp. God makes no mistakes. If you've been blessed with that hair of yours, you were definitely meant to be. There's no questioning about that. Hence, type 4C hair is never going to turn into 3A or 3B. Brownish hair is never going to be jet black hair. You get me here? 
Just go with the flow and enjoy your hair journey to the maximum. You are beautiful the way you are, but only you cannot see it. Quick life story. I had a friend of mine with beautiful natural hair. Wasn't really comfortable with her natural hair color. Decided to color it, damage it. Now she's forced to start all over again. So please be smart, pick your battle. Unfortunately, this happens quite often in our community. Remember, you cannot have it all. Just be realistic and accept and own what you have. Work with what you have and go with it. Tip number nine, reaching the end soon. Trim your ends if needed. Healthy hair will lead to longer hair. So as I've already mentioned this earlier, always prioritize health over length. If these ends of yours are thinning, look split or weird, sparsing, or always creating some kind of tangling mass every time you're trying to detangle, I think it's time to say bye-bye. Snip it off. But use hair shears. No paper scissors, please. Or you could simply get it done professionally if you don't feel comfortable enough to do it yourself. With a proper hair regimen, you might not even have to do it, but who knows? I know some naturals who never done this because they stay on their hair games when it comes to their hair routine. But if you ever do need it, dust those hands away. Finally, finally, tip number 10, discipline and consistency. Discipline yourself and be consistent. We tend to be lazy. We go on and off with our beautiful natural hair or even hair care. Yes, beautiful, you heard me. I know some of you guys don't believe that, but our hair looks gorgeous. If I do say so myself, <laughs> positive vocabulary is really important, girls, when you talk about your hair. You need to be patient and forgiven and positive to your hair. That's self-love and self-acceptance. Let me not get carried away. Back to what I was saying. If you want to see visible results in your hair growth, you have and you need to develop a consistent regimen. Stick to it. Otherwise, you're just wasting your time. I had to learn this the hard way when I've lost my hair in 2019. My piece of advice, if you're gonna be a lazy natural, and do nothing to your hair for a significant period of time, stick to braiding or twisting, whether additional hair is involved or not. Otherwise, if you're ever planning to wear an afro on a regular or daily basis, sister girl, you're gonna have to wash your hair more frequently. Trust me, I'm speaking from personal experience here. You do not want your hair to lock. Mm -hmm. That will need much more effort and continuous effort always end up paying off. Yay, we made it to the end. It's the little things that make the big difference. Not necessarily the huge, obvious tips, but these little things that add up and make you better at what you do. And that's what I'm trying to do with you ladies. Here, I am trying to help you out the best I can. I wish somebody warned me and told me about this. Some of these you probably knew already, but you sleep on them. No, each of these tips has its own importance. Bring something to the table. Do not neglect it. Especially if you're wearing your hair kinky and coily naturally. If you have the tighter, coilier textures, I'm telling you, they are extremely valuable. These are the top tips I love and I'm still using until nowadays. So, which one of these 10 tips you struggle the most with and need to improve? Let me know in the commentary section, girls. I want to know. Hit that like button if you liked the video and found it informative. Subscribe if you aren't already. Ladies, I will see you next week. <laughs> Take care. Hi. Oh my God.